Late One Night by Sharon Perkins Although I didn't grow up in a Christian home, my mother often brought my sister and me to Sunday school and vacation Bible school programs. I grew up having a realization that there was a God, but it didn't go beyond that. My father was against anything vaguely religious. As a teenager, I was babysitting very late one evening. In fact, it was approaching the wee hours of the morning, and I desperately wanted to be home sleeping. As I watched out the window, hoping to see the headlights of my employers coming down the road, it seemed like the proverbial watch pot that never boils. In those days, most television stations ceased broadcasting at one in the morning. I don't remember what time it was, but as I switched from station to station to station, there were only three available back then, the only thing I found to watch was a religious program called The 700 Club. I would never have opted to watch this program if there had been any other choice, but being bored and exhausted, I settled in to hear what they had to say. I don't remember much about the topic, but when someone said, if you have never invited Jesus into your heart and life, you need to do that now. What followed was a suggested prayer of salvation. I felt like I had been hit with a ton of bricks. I had never heard this before. I quickly repeated that prayer I had heard, telling God that I knew I was a sinner and that I believed that He sent His only Son to die on the cross to take the penalty of sin that I deserved onto Himself for me. When I stared out the window this time, I whispered a prayer for the parents of the darling children asleep in their rooms to return home soon. Just then, the longed-for headlights appeared, and I was on my way home. Since I didn't attend a church on a regular basis, I didn't have an immediate change in lifestyle or behavior. In fact, I had often been described as sort of a goody-goody, so there wasn't a great deal of cleaning up to be done, except, of course for the sin-darkened heart condition. I kind of even forgot about the decision that lonely night. A couple of years passed, and all of my friends started pairing up with boyfriends, but I never seemed to find anyone that was interested in me. I was infatuated by a few boys along the way, but they never reciprocated. There was one nephew of a neighbor that would visit for the summer, but he ended up being pretty bad news, so in retrospect, I see God working behind the scenes in my life even then to protect me from a bad relationship. I went on a few dates, but didn't find that one that I was searching for, no one to call a boyfriend. One night, I earnestly prayed for God to give me a boyfriend. Not long after that prayer, the school year was coming to an end. As was the tradition, we all passed around our yearbooks for our friends to sign. As I was doing just that in my math class, I exchanged yearbooks with a fellow student I barely knew, but I didn't want to be rude by asking others and not him. When I got home and read his entry, I was shocked. It talked about wanting to get to know me better. My heart started racing as I dreamed of the possibilities here. To make a long story short, I started hanging around a group of friends that included Aaron, the yearbook signer. As we started hanging out one-on-one -on -one more, he invited me to church by saying, last week in Sunday school, we talked about what makes a good husband. This week we are discussing what makes a good wife. Would you like to go? Of course. As I began attending his Baptist church, I began to hear the salvation message again. This time, I really understood the message and once again asked Jesus into my heart and life. I don't know when I was really saved, if it was that first time as I was babysitting, or the second time, when I had a better understanding of my sinfulness and God's grace, but I am thankful that he brought me to himself in saving faith and as an added bonus, gave me a godly man, who I ended up marrying, in answer to my prayers.